Hey everyone, Aaron here. Welcome back to another anime review. Today we look at Alderman on the Sky, episode 3. Now, you know, one thing I'll say about this episode, it's a little bit boring. I'm going to be honest with you guys and girls. But what it does is it sets up nice pacings. We actually have our main cast of characters in their roles that they're going to be playing for the rest of the series, I think. And it also shows how their academy life is going within the military. And it's a very comedic episode at the very beginning. Like, I mean, it's all comedy at the beginning, more so than kind of a little more serious toward the end. But overall, solid episode. I like the series so far. Episode 3 was awesome. And if you're doing, like, the three-episode test type rule, you'll probably definitely want to stick around because I think this show has a lot more to offer. Anyways, let's talk about what happened in this episode, though. So, we actually have, like I said before in the beginning of this review, that our cast of characters, that all five of them have become... Uh, military soldier trainees essentially now they are of course starting off at a higher rank so that means once they go through the academy life they will gi be given their kind of higher role where they have to be but they still have to go through the processes of you know learning and showing that they have the aptitude both physically and mentally so you know they say they show them training they show them you know dealing with other bullies and stuff like that it's a nice kind of a comedic type episode in the beginning like i mean honestly i was cracking up at the beginning of the various stuff that happened Especially one scene where it shows the kind of classroom setting where Ikta and uh, the princess are together in class. And Ikta, who's not even really paying attention, is able to tell her what page they're on and actually then get up at one point when they're talking about, uh, when he's asked who this general is for this one particular battle, he's able to get up, school the teacher in who the guy was and everything about his information and actually get a round of applause from the classmates because they realize Ikta's smart. He really is. You know, he might be kind of weird and he might be, uh, I think, a womanizer in many ways, which we'll get onto in a couple minutes, but he's still a good character for the most part. Now, we also meet um, one of the character's brothers, which, by the way, I just put the scene in because honestly, dude, this guy is always in a hammock. Like, damn, I think it's three episodes in. I've seen him in a hammock now every episode. Quite literally, every episode he's been in a hammock. I mean, is that going to be a staple of the show? That he's going to be in a hammock every episode? I I'm presuming not, but three episodes, every every episode hammock. Um, but he actually um, helps out one of his friends on the group, the green hair guy, when he actually is kind of assaulted by his brother. And Ikta takes, you know, takes some punches. He really does. But he does it on purpose because he knows the princess and his friend, the girl with the red hair, is actually, you know, en route to him. And, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, we're just training, you know, doing a training exercise. You, you can take my place right now. And she goes, okay. She beats the shit out of all these guys. I mean, honestly, this girl is, she's awesome. I wish I remembered her freaking name because I, I know it's something, but I cannot remember her name in the life of me. Um, but she kicks so much ass. I mean, that's one thing I like about her character. She, you could see even in the beginning parts where she's training and stuff like that. She's very physically fit and definitely has that excel uh, over everyone else. Now, three months pass, and we see that finally our troops leaders are actually given their platoons, essentially. We have Ikta, who's given his kind of squadron. And guess what? Very interesting about this one, which I talk about the womanizing part. Not He didn't womanize her. He womanized her mother. And apparently they were the mother and him were sleeping together at one point. So she doesn't like him. She actually takes over the role of all of his troops. like, And, you know, he's like... At one point, you know, you, you know, listen, I know you don't like it, but, you know, we still have to, I have to, like, lead my troops. And she's like, well, you know, I, I'm only, I'm going to do this and that. And he's like, you know what, the mock battle, which is, I'm going to actually show and I'm going to stop rambling because I think I'm rambling at this part. The mock battle is starting to approach and he, t he gives her kind of an ultimatum. He goes, okay, if I lead the troops to victory, I will be then re-given my, you know, unit to actually lead. If I don't, I will go sign up for a desk office, which is something she recommends because she feels he's unfit to be a leader. And most of the troops after the womanizer part realize he might be. But I definitely think he's going to prove within the next couple of scenes, he's a leader. You know, he memorized the whole map. Like she's, you know, they're going through the mock battle scenario and they're going up to where they have to meet up at one point. And, you know, he says, I've never been here before. And she's like, but you knew exactly where to go. He goes, yeah, I had the, I had the map all memorized in my head. You know, I don't want to keep pulling it out there in the rain because otherwise it gets, you know, gets damaged and it's a pain in the ass. Come on, man. Ikta is cool as hell. I mean, this guy, probably one of the MCs of the year. I, honestly, like, he's one of the coolest MCs of the, the, the season in Eyes Truth. And I, I love his character. I mean, honestly, I think it's, his character goes a lot against a lot of the norms of anime, which is pretty cool. Uh, but they actually do meet on the battleground at one point. And, you know, the enemy is actually going, where are the other enemy? Where is Ekta and his troops? Oh, yeah, they're meeting somewhere else. He's like, wait, we're supposed to meet here. 
And he goes, secondly, we're not supposed to meet here. We're technically said this is an ideal place to start. But he actually, Ikta already had planned out where he's going to meet up and where to fight on his terms. Ikta is going to kick ass. I know that already. Like, I mean, they said that before, that he's the leader. He's going to be known as the lazy general. But he's going to be one of the best generals, I feel like that already. And you can see signs of that from the gates of the show. Honestly, overall, great episode. I'm definitely going to try to remember these people's names. I think I think the guy with the green hair is Toru, I believe. And I'm trying to think of the other guy's name, but um, I'm definitely going to start trying to remember these people's names. I really need to do that. Also, guys and girls, I will be reviewing 91 Days. I know I have not reviewed the first two episodes of that series, but I caught up with it on over the other day. And I will be reviewing episode 3 and see how that goes. So I'm hoping to see you guys there. Anyways, I will talk to you all later. Have a great day, everyone. You know the whole 9. I'm not going to go over it because I don't always want to go tell you what to do in terms of, you know, my channel. Bye-bye, everyone.